Hello everyone, Larry Sanswell here. June 1st already. Let's walk through the garden. Well, since we're at the tomatoes, let's start here. Look at all these blooms. I've never seen a tomato plant with so many blooms. This is season such sugary. They are developing it. Looks like it's going to be a pear type, a paste, which is exactly what I need. This year I need to make some more spaghetti sauce or we'll use it for pizza. Uh, these two white boards are showing up. I, I still haven't gotten my wall built. Uh, these white boards that keep showing up in some of my videos are, we're going to be thrown away. We have a new track. Uh, we, we're calling it a little park that uh, has all of our records on it. So I'm going to use these boards to uh, cover up the foundation if I ever get to it. So the sugary, and this is Lincoln, not as many blooms, but it's still growing. <laughs> you can see some of my uh, marigolds that were in that uh, dollar store mix. They're starting to get really tall and bloom. My pepper plant is blooming. These really need hot, hot heat to do well. This is JM's bee bomb. This is the bee bomb that had all the poison ivy in it. You can see no more poison ivy. His uh, bee bomb up in the Perino garden is starting to bloom. I'll show you that in a minute. Ethan's flower garden. These are the nicotina plants I planted in the basement early on. This is a flame anicus starting to grow up there. It should be about three feet tall. My false indigo has gone to seed. I'm going to wait until these seed pods turn black, and then I'm going to try to plant them. The red hot poker, the uh, hummingbirds have been enjoying it. That is definitely something I'm going to divide this fall. The bird bath. I keep this gallon jug of water here to fill it up. The birds absolutely love this little bird bath. My Mexican petunia has bloomed and dropped a bloom. Go over there and go over here in a minute. This is a bee bomb. This was a four inch pot last year that I bought on sale at one of the local nurseries. And uh, I think it's going to be a purple variety, but it has uh, really, from a four inch pot, uh, it's, going, it's done well. More tomatoes over here. This one is uh, bread and salt. Again, not as many blooms as that sugary. My uh, lettuce has gone to seed, so is the radish, and I don't remember what this is called. I have planted some cucumbers here, more pine trees. These pine trees are everywhere this year. But I'm going to let these bloom. I'm, I'm not in any hurry to get them out of there. They'll bloom for the pollinators. The peas, we have had several uh, helpings off of this. We only pick enough to have one for one meal. It is like eating candy. So these will go up. Uh, I'll pull these up too, and they'll go down to the chickens. This is the onion crop that will be good for the storage. This tomato plant, big beef, not doing great. It's got this uh, problem with the upper leaves. They curl up. I've had that over the years. This was the Vidalia-type onion that we plant and use for salads. Strawberry beds are pretty much done. We've had strawberries and strawberries and strawberries. The uh, raspberries are doing well, trying to keep them away from the birds. I, uh, my good friend in uh, Indiana, Jimmy, suggested I get some snakes. Well, I couldn't find any rubber snakes this time of year, so I put some garden hose out here. I, I think they know the difference. Up here in the bluebird house, there's another bluebird nest in there. Uh, I really like the, the uh, baby bluebirds as they come out. They have to be fed by their parents. Down here, the grass we tried to grow last fall is doing well. We let the horses out here about two hours a day. If we're going to be gone all day or going to be late doing chores, we let them out here a little bit longer than that. We're in a rain deficit right now of about an inch, so I have been watering, been watering the garden and the, um, the grass out here. No blooms yet on my canna lily. 
This is a Jerusalem artichoke that's really doing well. I kind of dug them up by accident uh, this spring, and after I dug them up, I spread them out a bit. The potatoes are blooming. That means there's some fresh potatoes down there. These are going to be white blooms, so those are white potatoes or russet, and these are the red potatoes. And this pile over here, actually getting closer to my garden wall. Under there is a pile of what's called crush and run. That'll be the foundation for my bricks. Trying to keep the dirt out and the, all these leaves out. And uh, I'm going to start working on that. But I've been busy. I've been uh, washed the house, uh, pressure washed the playground, spread out uh, four yards of uh, mulch. I've been working on the barn a little bit. So, lots to do. Quick walk through the perennial garden. The harrow, like always, never fails to put on a show. These are the bloom flowers that I transplanted last year. I could not be happier with them. They are beautiful. They'll be blooming by the next time I show uh, a garden tour. The Texas uh, blue-eyed grass has come and gone. <laughs> And I see a verbena coming up in the middle of that. We've got verbenas everywhere. There's a couple more back there. The strawberry plants of all strawberries are still producing. There we go. Still blooming. Lots of them in there. They're at the point now where you can kind of walk through and uh, pick and eat as you go. Spiderwort here all by itself. This is JM's. It's James Bee Bomb as well. Speaking of bees, there's one right there. That's a bumblebee. I've seen more bumblebees this year than I have carpenter bees, and that's a good thing. In fact, the carpenter bees have not been a real problem this year. It must have been that night of seven degrees weather that helped that population. Zoom back out here. More nicotina. The Daisies are just now coming into bloom. More blooms on those uh, strawberries. Several up there. My foxgloves, the first flush has pretty much come and gone. I'm going to cut most of these down. I'm going to leave a few to go to seed. But if I cut the majority of them down, some will go to seed, and then I'll get another flush of color. The honeybells that I bought from Burpees were here, and you can see they're getting kind of overwhelmed with the uh, Black Eyed Susans. And the uh, red yarrow I discovered last time, I've got a lot more of that than I realized. It's really pretty. Anyway, I moved the honeybells up into this spot. You may recall that's where all of those uh, daylilies that I didn't like, and I've been saying for two years I'm going to get out of the way. That was one of the projects I've done in the last two weeks. It took almost all day and a lot of digging, but uh, I moved them down to a spot that they'll have plenty of room to grow. My Joe Pie weed here. It looks like I need to separate the Joe Pie weed from that red uh, yarrow, this, at least this plant. This is a miniature Joe Pie weed. Some more... Shasta daisies. All of this here is uh, Black Eyed Susans, and I need to treat that for the fungus. Uh, last year I treated it early like this. Uh, I'll try, try to treat it this week. It got rid of all this fungus. Normally at this time of year, this would be covered with those little black dots. But the fungicide I use smells like fish oil. Worked marvelously. My echinacea area right up here. Beautiful. I'm going to go up there a little bit and uh, probably end the video showing you those because there's some beautiful echinacea up there. I think some of the Black Eyed Susan is covering this up. Maybe not. I do need to thin out some of the Black Eyed Susans. Volunteer tomato plant here. And these are some seeds that I planted in the basement and it looks like they're going to be uh, zinnias. The cestacea will attract the hummingbirds. There's another bumblebee working on that one that's already blooming. And my gladioluses are blooming up there. 
they've really spread too. Fish pond's doing great. My canterbells, look at those growth. Look at the growth. It's going to hit the ceiling here. It's right above the uh, picture frame right here, the window frame. This one's not quite as high. And this one is climbing into my shed. I haven't planted anything in here this year. It's really hard to keep it watered. Over here in this bed, the lettuce didn't come up. The radishes came up and they're all tops, but my sunflowers are looking great. This pepper plant down here is not looking well at all. And I'm not sure why. But the soil in this bed is awful. This is where the Georgia crazy worms go. And look at that. It looks like coffee grounds. There's just nothing to hold the moisture in. It's like, it's like coffee grounds and sand. Once I get these walls built, I'll probably go to the Ruth Stout method of heavy, heavy, heavy mulch and see if that'll improve it. But my corn's doing okay. I've got them propped up with some bricks because there's just no soil to hold it. The um, okra here, this is red okra. Okra is a long season crop. And that's why it's good for Georgia here because we have a long growing season. Once it starts producing, though, it'll produce until the frost. These are more of my uh, dollar store marigolds and part of that uh, burpee marigold mix. I don't know the, which is which. And this is my third pepper plant. I only planted three. We don't use a lot of peppers. I was hoping Ethan was going to come by and help me, but he's got baseball almost every day. I need to get this uh, tree out of here. It's just an eyesore. No lotus blooms yet, but they should be coming soon. Oh, here's Karen's favorite purple raspberries. I'm going to let the... She'll, she'll be through here after she does her chores. I'll tell her that they're there. I like the color of this yarrow. Again, this was about a six-inch plot last year. After my last video, uh, I had some questions on this rose. And I really didn't know, or I really don't know anything about it. I've had it for 20 years. But I'm pretty sure it's a rambling rose and not a climbing rose because it only blooms really in the spring. There's a little bud on it. Let me zoom in on that. There's a little new bud right here. But as you can see, most of it has just come and gone. There are a few really old, like this one, old branches in there that need to be cut out and that's what I'll do in the next couple of weeks. I'll get my farmer defense sleeves on there and uh, go, go in there and cut those out and then I'll do a month, another major trimming in uh, late December or January. Here are the Tefafinas. These They did reseed themselves. I didn't plant these this year. Got some flocks in here too. The uh, four clocks are here too. I, they will overtake your garden if you let them. I transplanted some of JM's bee bomb that was up on the hill down here. It was kind of an empty space. The irises are just blooms now. Oh, look at there. I got to zoom in here. Little tree frog down there. I don't use any pesticides, or I try to do um, the herbicides I use is vinegar. I killed these. Killed these weeds with vinegar. I think it's a 7% solution I get at the feed store. I, I don't trust Roundup anymore. Look at this. This is my bargain at uh, Walmart. It was $17. I think I paid 5 for it. It's doing great. Another tomato back here. This looks like another uh, sugar sugary because uh, it's got those same size tomatoes on it. So next to the pond, I've got a hibiscus plant here that's got some buds on it. Those will be coming out soon. And behind it, Jerusalem artichokes. A couple of sunflowers I planted back there as well. This is another sunflower I planted. It's going to bloom here soon. And I think we've pretty much gone through the garden. Let's go up to a better view here of the honey bells. I put a trail camera on here all day yesterday. I haven't checked it yet. I don't know if the hummingbirds visited 
or not. Some speedweed over here, more nicotina. Different perspective of the garden right here. I'm not sure what those yellow flowers are. I really like these. They're doing great. These will be ready to divide in the fall as well. I'll use that new auger to dig more holes up here. That way I'll have a better chance of missing all of the daffodil bulbs that are already here. James Bee Bomb, it's about three or more. It's over three feet tall. It's over a meter, actually. I bought a bleeding heart plant at the nursery the other day. We bought some shrubs to put in the corner of our en entrance, some hollies, that, because we had some gardenias in there that uh, were just looking awful. And that's another project I've been working on. Way over here, I'll stop and take a picture of the plants I've got going here. That This is a mixed seed plant, but these are the um, hollies we bought. They're supposed to get a couple feet tall and three feet wide. So right here, this is where I've been trying to dig out these gardenias. They're in there really well. They've been in there 20 years, and they've kind of run their course. So next time, I'll show you what this looks like after I get it ready. Leave you at the top of the hill here today. Beautiful day in Georgia. We need rain, but the garden's looking great. Hope yours is too. Thanks for watching.